Welcome to Hot and Trocken. In this video, I want to talk to you about linear functions, their geometrical interpretation, and about the point slope and the point point formulas. A linear function is a function which is described by a formula like this y equals ax plus b, where a and b are constants. The reason why it is called linear function is that the graph of a linear function always is a straight line. The exact position of that straight line within the coordinate system is determined by the constants a and b. If I draw a rectangular triangle to the line like this, where I call the lower horizontal segment delta x and the vertical segment delta y, the constant a can be recovered as the quotient of delta y divided by delta x. So the constant a determines the steepness or the slope of the line, which is why a is also called the slope of the linear function. The constant b has an even simpler graphical interpretation. Because if you plug in x equals 0 into the formula, all what remains is b. So that means b is the function value of the function at x equals 0. By f I of course mean our linear function. So b can be thought of as the position where the graph intersects with the y-axis. For that reason b is often called the y-intercept. Now let's play around with the slope a little more. For linear functions like these, the slope is approximately 1. Because if you draw that slope triangle as I did before, you'll find that delta y and delta x are approximately of the same length, which is why the quotient of them is approximately 1. On the other hand, in this case, the slope should be very small and close to 0, because delta y is very small compared to delta x, which is why the quotient gets very small. In the extreme case, when the linear function is perfectly parallel to the x-axis, the slope is exactly zero, because we cannot even draw such a triangle, because delta y is just zero. The other extreme case is that the function is very steep, like this. If I draw the triangle, I find that delta y is very large compared to a very small delta x. So if I write down the quotient, the numerator will be very large and the denominator will be very small. Altogether, the value of the quotient gets large. In the extreme case of a perfectly parallel line to the y-axis, the slope would be plus infinity and thus non-existing. However, that line does not even represent a function, because there is only one x-value in the possible domain, which is as such not a problem, but there is a problem when we think about which function value should this x value have. Obviously, there is no unique function value defined. So this is no function, so we don't have a problem with infinitely steep slopes. But we can also have negative slopes. In this case, the triangle looks like this. What I haven't told you yet is that we also consider the directions within this triangle. That means the horizontal section, the delta x, is positive because we walk from the line to the right. However, in this case, the vertical section, delta y, is negative because we have to walk downwards in order to meet the graph again. So altogether, the quotient will be negative. In this case, approximately negative 1. The slope a also has a non-geometrical interpretation. If f of x represents some quantity depending on some other quantity x, the amount by which f of x increases when x increases by 1 is exactly a. The amount by which f increases when x increases by 1 is fx plus 1 minus f of x. Because this is the amount of f when x has already been increased by 1 and this is the original amount of f. And because we write minus, this is the difference of both, which means the amount by which f increases. If we now use the formula above and plug in the values, we get a x plus 1 plus b 
minus AX, now minus B, yeah? because we have to subtract both of these positive values. Now, if we simplify, first thing is that B cancels away and we get AX plus A, factoring out that first expression, and then minus AX. And that simplifies too, because with AX minus AX, simply A. So A is the remaining term. Now let's have a look at some examples. Because linear functions are not only a purely mathematical thing, but can be used to describe simple dependencies of one quantity of another. One example are cost functions in economics. This function here is the cost function of the US Steel Corporation. C of X is the total cost in US dollar per year, whereas X is the production amount of steel in tons per year. The interpretation of the slope 55.73 is that if the production is increased by one ton per year, the costs will increase by 55.73 dollars per year. The y-intercept of about 180 millions can be interpreted as the fixed costs. Because in the extreme case where I set x equals zero, I still have these costs without even producing one single ton of steel. Now returning to the geometrical way of thinking about linear functions. Linear functions can be simply thought of as formulas for straight lines. In many situations, we want to construct straight lines from certain given information. Construct means not only geometrical, but we want to find the formula. One of these situations is that we are given the slope of the line as well as one point where the line should pass through. So the job is to build the formula for a line which has a given slope a and which passes through a given point x0, y0. In order to construct the formula, we start with a general formula, which is y equals ax plus b. If we find the right a and the right b, we are done. However, a is already given, so we don't have to do anything to find a. We just use that A. In order to find B, on the other hand, we have to somehow use the fact that the line should pass through x0, y0. We do this by expressing the fact that the line should cross x0, y0 in mathematical terms, by simply writing the following equation. So because our line, or we can also say our function f, should pass through that point x0, y0, we have y0 equals ax0 plus b and mind the zeros. Now on this equation, every variable is known except for b. We know the value for a because this is the given slope and we know the values for x0 and y0 because that is the given point. So the only variable we don't know is b. But in this case, we can simply solve this equation for b and find the value for b that way. So now we can take that value for b and plug it into our equation up here. Bringing it all together, we get the following equation. y equals ax, now plus y0 minus a x0. Yeah? That is the formula for b. If we now simplify a little, we get a times x minus x0 plus y0. Complete this with y and voila, we're done. That is the formula for the straight line with slope a and passing through the point x0, y0. This formula has a name. It is called the point-slope formula. Now let's have a look at another situation. Here we are given two points, x0, y0 and x1, y1, and the line should pass through these points. Obviously, by prescribing two points, the line is uniquely defined, which is why we don't need any other information. Especially, in this case, the slope is not directly given. But in fact, we can easily find out the slope by using the slope triangle as I did before. In this case, we construct it using exactly the two known points. 
as you know from before, the slope of that line is the quotient of delta y divided by delta x. However, in this case, we can write down precise values for delta y and delta x. The reason is that we have constructed the triangle like we did. For in this situation, delta y is nothing else than the difference between the y coordinates of the two known points, which is nothing else than y1 minus y0. Similarly, delta x is nothing else than the difference in the x coordinates of the two known points, which is nothing else than x1 minus x0. Plugging in these values in the slope equation, we get, which is a formula calculating the slope of the line from the coordinates of the two given points. Now remember the point-slope formula we just figured out before. We can use it in our situation by simply plugging in the formula for a, which we have just calculated, for a here in the formula. Altogether, we get the following. Why? And now I plug in the expression for a, which is y1 minus y0 divided by x1 minus x0 times x minus x0 plus y0. And we are done. That is the so-called point-point formula for a line when we're given two points which the line should pass through. It's important to have a precise understanding of all these x and y's in this formula. The first known point, x0, y0, is used here. The second known point, x1, y1, is used here. The remaining y and x are the variables which make this formula a function. Now let's play around with the point-point and the point-slope formulas in some examples. First, we want to find the equation of the line through the point negative 2, 3 with slope negative 4. Here we are given a slope and a point, which is why I use the point-slope formula. In this formula, we can now simply plug in the values for x0, y0 and a. Doing this, we get the following. Now, strictly speaking, we are already done. But that is not yet a nice shape for a linear function, so we simplify. I prefer this shape because here we can see that the slope is minus 4 and the y-intercept is minus 5. In the next example, we want to find the equation of the line through the points negative 1, 3 and 5, negative 2. In this case, we apply the point-point formula. The good thing about the point-point formula is that it always gives the right result, no matter which of the two points we choose to be the first point, x0, y0. So let's say the first one is the 0 one and the second one is the 1 one. So if we now carefully plug in these values, we get the following. First, we simplify this fraction. This is minus 5 over 6 times x, and I'll resolve these two minus signs, which is x plus 1 plus 3. And again, I want to resolve the brackets, which gives minus 5 over 6 times x, minus 5 over 6 plus 3, and I want to simplify, I want to combine those two, which gives minus 5 over 6x minus 5, 6. Um, now 3 is 18 over 6 and this simplifies to minus 5 over 6x plus 13 over 6. So we find that the slope of the line is minus 5 over 6 and the y-intercept is 13 over 6. So that's it for this video on linear functions. Thanks for watching and see you next time.